So actually a quick subtopic while I'm talking about facts, objects of thought, and existence that I want to touch on are numbers. And numbers aren't reality, but they're a measurement of reality and equations or functions or the different families of math, algebra, calculus, geometry, topology, what have you, are all just trying to convey patterns amongst those measurements. And measurements in some arbitrary counting base require some system of basis and comparison so we have from that logic and there are all of these properties which seem universal in existence in that they're true under all circumstances withstanding properties of matter and time everywhere in the universe what does this mean for example if you have a triangle with a right angle and at that right angle, two of the sides are the same length, then the hypotenuse will have a length that's a ratio of the square root of two times the length of the other sides. But then from this you can construct if you have two sets that are non-empty, A and B, where all of the elements of A represent quantities of measurements that are less than all of the elements of B, and the set a contains no greatest element and you could take b to be all of the say rational numbers or measurements that are greater than the square root of two this is something called a dedekind cut and from this you can construct the real numbers with all of their algebraic properties you know identity elements for operations of addition and multiplication, uniqueness of those, there being additive and multiplicative, well, not multiplicative inverses, but additive inverses, all of those properties so that you can fundamentally build up calculus. And one of the reasons that we really treasure calculus, but that it has all these rules relating to continuity and there's so much buildup in math to get to it is because our perception is seemingly a continuous one-to-one reversible or basically non-invertible in the time domain existence. So when we want to characterize that, we need mathematical tools to handle those kinds of states of affairs if we want to represent them using the mathematical kind of terminology. So as you can see, numbers sort of exist in between facts, objects of thought, as well as existence. They're kind of in the middle. But now to quickly answer the second big question of this video, what are the meanings of being? I'm going to give you guys this quote and I'm not gonna say at first where the quote is from and I'm not going to do a lot of explication onto what I think about the quote. I'm just gonna let it sink in for you guys because it sort of speaks for itself in my opinion. So without any further ado, but it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter and the fire and the offering. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the purifier and the syllable om. I am also the rig, the sama and the yahur. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place and the eternal seed. O oh, Arhuna, I control heat, the rain and drought. I am immortality and I am also death personified. Both being and non-being are in me. And that is from the Bhagavad Gita. So hope you guys enjoyed that. But basically to sort of play along with this word game that essentially all these questions and answers are because really, you know, language is just something that if you want to talk about that existing, it exists before we're born, after we die, and unless we make four Formal contributions through academia or writing you know a landmark novel or something like that few of us ever actually push the barriers of the language that we use every day and yet certain languages like Latin don't exist or you know they're said to be dead but they exist because you can still look up dictionaries of them and learn Latin and things like that etc but anyways to answer the question what are the meanings of being if I'm going to put it into just a single sentence I would say it is Krishna consciousness via karma yoga which is devotional service acting awarely in the now and I do 
have certain nihilistic beliefs still, which is that everything really on this earth as far as our human context is ultimately meaningless because the earth is going to get swallowed up by the sun eventually and there are all of these factors of nature going against us, things like that. Humanity will probably survive on, we might colonize Mars, blah blah blah, things like that. But ultimately everything in the universe will probably come to an end in some kind of collapse. So even if the most grand lasting structures are created in the universe, it is all going to come to an end. But whatever those structures are and how they play out and their purposes, that is what Krishna consciousness really is. And as I mentioned previously, I have been more lately believing the organic model of the universe because if you think about it, everything is interconnected and unified as a single set of this domain of matter and energy. Whether or not it's in a virtual reality, everything would have to rely upon some kind of base reality, as I imagine it, or at least, you know, being trapped within this virtual reality simulation of it, and that that's how things are, you know what I'm saying? So that's all just gonna be going in Krishna consciousness, which if you're not familiar with the Bhagavad Gita, the best way, if you didn't sort of pick it up out of that quote, well, there wasn't much about devotional service in that quote. I would say it's sort of like how the bacteria in your body or in your stomach, for example, are keeping your immune system going. Those bacteria are technically life from like a biological standpoint, and they're fighting and doing their thing, dying, reproducing, generations going, and they have no idea or no conscious awareness, as far as we know at least, that they're within our bodies. So similarly, we don't know as humans if all of what we're doing is contributing to some sort of stru meta structure. I don't know the right terminology, but you sort of get what I'm saying. The analogy for higher than that. We don't really know what is going on at that grand scheme, but perhaps the universe is a single organism. There is that awareness. That's the Krishna consciousness because a lot of religions try to put their sort of terminology on that. But I think that after coming across a lot of the Christian and and Islamic, various and Jewish, different kinds of um, ways of phrasing it. It's all sort of saying the same thing, kind of. Religions are all also, in my point of view, just trying to advance a history of a rise to moral agency and just trying to espouse systems of moral ethics, stories of spirituality, self-realization, and methods for organizing society, keeping it with the elements of mystery, miraculousness, and of course that authority piece for the organization of society and advancements of ethics. And of course, though in reality it's turned out for a lot of things like the destruction of culture and that's a whole other can of worms, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm gonna try to wrap it up now. You should like this video, comment, subscribe, turn on all sorts of notifications, whatever you wanna do or not. Follow me on all my different social media and I hope you guys watch more of my videos. I I always say that there's gonna be more videos every week. There hasn't been, but there have been more videos. All right, anyways, see you guys later. Thanks for watching, bye.